Are you my mummy? Sorry. I know that's going to piss off a lot of people, but I love it. Um, also, it's a, also, it's like the main bulk of the comments I got when I made this gas mask, so I was like, why not? Um, hello everyone, it's Iron Warrior Cosplay here in the workshop. I should do my intro, I guess. Um, I am in the workshop, and today's video is a bit different from what I normally do. Um, it's, it's going to be a bit longer, um, it's going to be uploaded to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to share it to my cosplay page, etc. Uh, and today's video is about my Death Court of Krieg gas mask that I made. Now, I have had a lot of uh, messages mostly. There have been a few comments, but mainly it's been messages from a fair few people asking me about the Death Court of Krieg gas mask. So let's start off with some information for you guys. To start off with, I, uh, I got the base pattern for this gas mask from Janovic or Janovic. I don't know how to say it. I can never say it properly. One day I will figure out how to say it right. I'll, I'll, I'll meet somebody or someone will call me and tell me how to pronounce it and then I'll be able to do it properly. But Janovic, um, for, you, for those of you in the Warhammer community, you know exactly who he is. He makes amazing videos and uh, really funny uh, sort of skits when he's dressed up in his Death Corps of Krieg. Um, his YouTube channel and the link to the video I'm going to talk about will be down in my description. So if you guys go down there, they're, they're, they're right there. If you want, you can go watch his video first and then come back. Or if you watch this video, I'll explain everything as I go. So I watched his video and in the video he shows this pattern, which you guys will see right here. It'll be floating here. That pattern I zoomed in on, took a screenshot of. Because he, I, I asked him if he had a decent, like, full-size image of the pattern, and he didn't. So that's fine. Um, I put it onto my Lightburn software, traced around it, and then uh, did some paper templates. Uh, this is what I came up with. Um, but there was some changes and stuff I needed to do. I had to change the pattern uh, physically. And then what I did was I then scanned it back in and then put it back onto Lightburn and then uh, re-edited the pattern. Because the pattern that um, that he supplied or it shows in the video um, is a decent pattern, but the material he uses and the material I've used is different. The material he uses is almost like a it's like a roofing material, I think. And what it used to be was rubber and lead, but now they use rubber and aluminium. Where when you bend it, it stays that shape because the aluminium keeps it that shape, and obviously the rubber stays that shape too because it's all melded and molded into one one piece. It comes in a roll. Um, I looked up in the UK where to get that roll and I found it, but it's extortionate. It's so much money. To to use that material to make the Kree gas masks, I would have to make a, a ton of them and then sell them just to make my money back. So I decided, obviously, I'm not going to do that. I wanted to make one for myself. <clears throat> so I opted for five millimeter EVA foam. You guys can see that's five mil EVA foam. Yes, that is the inside of my gas mask. Yes, it's it's you know messy, but this is what people see. So I I don't really bother too much about what the inside of my props look like often. Um, this gas mask is not made of leather. So the first question I get asked is what leather did you use? The answer to that question is I did not use leather. This is five millimeter EVA foam painted to look like leather now the lighting isn't great here to show you just how it looks like leather but i'm hoping you guys can pick it up i will put some images up here if you guys want these are actual shots i've taken uh so you guys can actually see what the gas mask looks like up close uh the second question i get asked is uh what hardware did you use now obviously the lenses and the uh the actual hose connector here these are from a russian GP5 gas mask. So it's a real gas real gas mask parts on a 5mm EVA base that I made using um, altered Janovic parts uh, from his pattern. Um, and then just loads of editing and recutting and dremeling and checking and getting everything to fit correctly so that it like fits me nicely. Um, I have got some more to show you, but this video is going to be a bit lengthy, so bear with. Um, I also get asked then how I did the, the lenses in the, in, in the gas mask. You see the lenses in there? Now, this stuff is car uh, light tinting, or um, it's like, 
it's not for it's not for Windows because it's illegal to use it in your Windows and in a lot of places I know, especially the UK, you're not allowed to have your windows tinted too dark. Um this apparently is too dark, which it clearly is because you can barely see through it. Um I can see through it obviously from one side, but from a distance you can't see through it. See everything reflects off of it. Um you use it on your windows in your house and stuff. You can use it along the top of your windscreen of your car um, as like a, you know, just to help you with the sun, obviously, because it doesn't take up too much of your uh, windscreen. But that's the material I used. And the, the way it goes on is you spray water and then you, you, you place it on. It sticks to the water really well. Then you squeegee the water and once it dries, it sticks. That's what I did here. Just sprayed some water in, let it dry a little bit, rubbed it with my finger, Put the lens in that I'd cut to a perfect circle. I cut it bigger than what I needed. Tucked it in with a little squeegee, which is the same little spatula thingy. It's um, what you call it, a mask applier for like you know the um, for like your beauty treatments and stuff, like uh, like the masks and stuff that girls wear, and like the mud masks, and you rub it off. Um, me and Ranger of Krieg, uh, Angel actually did one for me and Ranger of Krieg when uh, we finished a con. It was it was actually quite relaxing. I'm not gonna lie. Um, that's what I use to apply my contacts men, but also it's what I use to squeegee this on the other side, to squeegee it all in and get it all in. Now, once it's in, um, it doesn't stop fogging up. You, it still fogs up just as if you had clear lenses. Um, but obviously I use the spray that I've got in my Krieg kit, uh, that I've made for myself. The Krieg kit, uh, includes anti-mist spray that bikers use. On the inside of their visors you spray it on uh you spray like three spritzes to cover it as best you can and then you leave it and it dries and once it dries it creates like a barrier so it doesn't fog up i've i've found a technique for myself which is i'll spray that on before a con i'll put it in my suitcase it'll dry on the way to the con when i get there what i do tend to do is is lick my finger a little bit and put a bit of saliva on there and rub that around and i'll dry that off with a bit of tissue Put the gas mask on, breathe heavily with without actually having everything on. Just put it on my face and breathe heavily. Steams up a little bit. What I do then is I'll, I'll rub it again with my finger and it causes condensation. And the condensation works as a barrier because it's already got condensation on it. It won't steam up again. And that's how I do the whole con. The whole con then, I can see clearly. I can see as clear as day through this. Yeah, it's a little bit weird, and also some people don't like the idea of just having to put saliva on your finger and rub the lenses, but it is what it is, and only I wear the gas mask. Don't get me wrong, Ranger of Creek has put it on, but that was before I actually wore it at my first con. So he got to wear it before I got to actually properly try it out at the Comic-Con. Um, with that being said, uh, some more questions I get asked are, um, have you stitched it together? Because in the video below in the description, Janovich actually uses a sewing machine and sews things together. No, these sewing lines, these dots here and the lines, the lines themselves are lasered in and the dots I do with a, a poker. I warm it up with my heat gun. I just poke it into the foam. I just poke the, the, the stitching nodules in and then I take the tiniest Games Workshop paintbrush that I have and I put a little dot of black inside so that you guys can see it. It looks like it's been stitched together. Now, I don't have a pattern that I can just give out. The reason being is because the pattern I have is for my Lightburn laser uh, laser program. So unless you have a laser cutter, that's probably the only way I can give you the pattern. I have tried to convert it to like a PDF, but the size is always wrong and I'm trying to figure out a way of doing it. So in future, I will figure out a way of getting this to like a PDF or something. And um, I've been t I've been told uh, not only by people I know, my very, you know, my very close friends stuff, but also my friends in the cosplay community, and my girlfriend, and just people in general who I know, uh, who've seen my patterns and stuff, and they said, you should start an Etsy and just start selling your patterns. Um, I could do, but this is a modified pattern from somebody else, and I, I don't know if I could... I'd have to speak to Janovich and see what he says. If he says he doesn't care or whatever, then fine, I will. But, you know, considering that, you know, I, I used his base pattern, put it on my laser and then worked it out and then physically had to trim it and whatever. It's it's hard to sort of figure out. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of patterns and stuff I've got for my laser program that I've made myself that took me hours and hours and hours. 
to go over and scale up and get everything right and cut everything into parts and whatever. Yes, I could sell those, but again, they're laser parts. So either, either I convert them all to like PDFs and they're all the correct scale, um, and then I can sell them as PDFs where you print them out, cut them out, and you know, you make like times four of this and flip this and all that kind of stuff. Whether I do those in the future, we'll see. I might start an Etsy store and start selling, uh, you know, files and stuff. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but for now, I'm just going to continue with making props and stuff for myself um, and others, you know, to see how things go. Moving on swiftly, well, quite slowly. Like I said, this video is going to be much longer than my normal ones. But moving on, uh, in terms of the paint job, now, the, the paint job is several different layers and different techniques i haven't actually made a video on how to do the leather effect um i, I got told uh, i got told by one of my uh, i got told by one of my cosplay friends I was like don't make a video telling people how to do it you should keep that for yourself you can't give away all your secrets and i'm like yeah but i don't know i like sharing stuff i like making videos if i if i can if i can help somebody out and show them how to do something and then they can use that to make something really cool then that makes me very, very happy. Um, it shines because I used a really nice uh, clear lacquer that has like a, a, a really nice gloss to it. But after putting the clear lacquer on and getting it all shiny, I then buff it with a like a scouring pad. So I buff it all with a scouring pad then to sort of give it a almost like a dull it down a little bit because it it's far too shiny. But it's it's not as shiny now as it used to be, even though it looks ridiculously shiny. Believe me, it wasn't, you know, this dulled it down. It was super glossy and it looked wet and it was horrible. <laughs> um, my, uh, my, next, uh, my next thing is the actual inside of the gas mask. Now, normally, I don't tend to show the inside of my work because I know there's a lot of people out there who are like, oh, that doesn't look very nice. To me, the inside of my props, I couldn't give a damn about it because whatever's on the inside of the props isn't going to be visible to anyone looking on the outside because this is what people see on the outside. They see the Creed gas mask. They don't see what I've done on the inside. So everything here, all of these parts, there is a total of uh, one, two, three, four. So there's, right, so you've got these two, these two pieces here. So straight down the middle, you've got one piece here, two pieces there. On the back, you've got another piece here, which is three, another piece there, which is four, and this little chin piece in the middle, which is five. That's how many pieces are uh, for the for the Death Quarter Queen gas mask. And on the inside, you can see where they've been contact cemented together on the outside to make it look nice on the outside. I support them with um, circles of hot glue. I do little circles of hot glue. And I've, I've done that since the very, very beginning and it hasn't failed me yet. Uh, as for the straps, the straps are melted with a lighter because they, they melt quite nicely. Um, they're melted with a lighter so they go quite solid. So they turn into hard plastic instead of the fabric. Itself, so that, that turns into a square of hard plastic. That hard plastic then, I um, use a little bit of contact cement on the foam, a little bit of contact cement on the hard piece of plastic, which is which used to be webbing. Um, I then push that on and then I will hot glue it like you can see here. I'll hot glue the ever loving crap out of it. Once I've hot glued it, I'll let it set. I'll then get a heat gun again and concentrate it right on where the hot glue is until it goes smooth. And until you can see it go all glossy and smooth. And then you let that set and it sets smooth so it doesn't hurt. If it's all lumpy, it'll hurt. Like you can, you'll be able to feel it against your skin. Obviously, I wear a balaclava and stuff, so I don't really feel it anyway. But just wanted to explain that to you. You can see on the inside, I've still got left and right written just in the middle of these here, but you can't really see it on camera. Um, these are the lenses from the gas mask. As you can see, they get cut up. The actual um, intake for the for you know your breathing and stuff that gets taken off. Um, the actual showing of the actual removal of these is in Janovich's video. So if you want to go watch that, he'll show you how to actually remove these with a screwdriver. They're super easy to remove. Super super easy. Once that's done, uh, I hot glued the rubber in because I've never actually done anything with rubber before um, or latex or whatever the actual gas mask is made from. Um, I think it's rubber. It's quite soft, but I used loads of hot glue. 
uh, around the edges and stuff and then pushed that in. Um, so there's loads of hot glue actually underneath. So underneath here, there's actually a lot of hot glue underneath it and then it all seeps out. Um, that hot glue is what holds everything in. Um, I haven't had any issues with it coming away from the from the rubber yet. So hot glue does stick to rubber quite well from my experience doing this. So that's great. And then finally, the um, the actual intake or outtake or the actual respirator portion of it where it does where the valves and everything are. Take the valves out. I took the valves out both the front and the back. There's a little metal screw in the middle there. That's what makes that noise. Um, that's like a pop rivet, so that's not going anywhere. So that just stays there. Um, this is this allows you to just breathe fresh air in and out. Even when the gas mask tube is here, this is just an open hole, so you can just breathe in and out. So that's fine. This is also hot glued in, but with an exception. It's hot glued in, and then around here, around here, where I put the gas mask on, I made a ring that sits inside the foam portion of the gas mask to make it slightly smaller, like a coupler almost. And that sits inside these, and then you bend the rings back down. It's like, they're like teeth. In Janovich's video, he'll show you how to do it. Um, all the teeth get bent back down, and that's what holds this in. Now, considering it's just EVA foam, it doesn't need a lot to hold it in. So contact cement on the outside, around it, this bent in to hold it, and then hot glue on the inside, sorted. Now, the webbing, it's an interesting one. So the gas mask sits like this on my face. Now, I didn't want the straps to just go directly outwards because they don't really work. So mine go up like this. So you see how they, they kink a little bit here? That's what you want. That little that little bit there. The, so the, the way I do it, now this is going to be difficult, but I'm going to put this on. The way I do it is, I will explain now before I actually do it, I put the gas mask on with the um, with the clip unbuckled. That goes on perfectly straight around the back of my head. Then, once it's clipped together, I have tightened this enough. I don't tighten this. This is already at the tightness I need it. I then lift the strap to the very back top of my head, the very crown of my head, where my where your hair goes into like a little circle at the top back of your head. There. That's where I lift it up to and it pulls the gas mask back up onto my face and holds it on my face. So I'll show you guys now how I do that. So like so, and then I lift that up like that. And that now holds the gas mask very firmly on my face, not going anywhere. Now, I know there's a beard. You can see my beard and you can see my hair. That's understandable. You can see my beard, you can see my hair. I don't know if you guys can actually hear me. I was trying to shout as loud as I can without deafening myself because being in this with the helmet on and everything is super loud. <clears throat> that then pulls the gas mask up and tight her onto my face. Um, with the hot glue and everything, it's super strong, even with the 5 mil foam. Foam does does take a fair chunk to actually rip it. Uh, I've actually got the same piece of 5 mil foam I used, and, and this stuff will this stuff will actually stretch quite a bit. See, it'll stretch quite a bit and like warp before it actually tears. Um, well, this stuff does anyway, the stuff that I buy. I don't know about other 5mm foams. I couldn't tell you about other companies and stuff, but the foam that I use stretches a lot before it tears, which is ideal, really. So the amount of pressure I needed to pull that, it, this isn't that much pressure when it goes in the back of my head. It's barely any pressure. It's super comfortable. You can wear it all day after you've done, you know, the stuff with the lenses and you can see all day. You get fresh air through these two ports here. The two ports there, you get fresh air through there. You are just more than okay. So, what I thought I would do is just to show you how I go about putting on my Death Corp Free gas mask <clears throat> with my kit. So, I use, I, I buy bigger balaclavas than what I need. This is a double XL balaclava, it's a bigger balaclava than I normally would use. The reason I wanted this is because this balaclava comes really far down on your chest. And I really like that. Even though my coat closes, it's nice to have the balaclava come down a lot. I just, there's something about I really, really like. Uh, next up then to cover my neck, 
I have uh, one of these. I don't know what you guys call these where you are, but here it's just called like um, a neck snood or something. Um, it's uh, it's really handy. Don't get me wrong, it is warm, but it works a treat. So if you bear with me one moment, I'll just get my stuff ready and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay then, we're back. So I have everything ready. So the way I do this, I put the balaclava on first. Now, with a beard this immaculate and this big, I do tend to have to tuck it out of the way. So I put this on like this, and I tuck my beard out of the way, but I keep my nose um, above this. I don't tend to tuck my nose in that often. Once you do that, you put the neck cover on, and the neck cover, the neck cover goes on like so, like that, and I keep it up near my chin, just near my chin, like just under my chin there, because the gas mask has to go somewhere. Then, to pull this down a little bit, then I pull in the sides to make sure that the, the sides don't show any skin when I put the gas mask on. I will then put the gas mask on and then put the helmet on and show you how I look when I'm in the crank. So, as you can see, the Deathcore Krieg is pretty easy to put on and pretty easy to take off too. All I have to do is do the same, but the other way around. Now, the gas mask with the uh, balaclava and everything is super comfy. Does get very hot, don't get me wrong, it gets very, very hot. Now. You guys saw stuff there, you might want to know what it is. Well, you guys have seen the, the neck cowl or the neck cover or the neck snood. I'm not sure what it's called. There's a bunch of names for it. The extra large balaclava, the very largest balaclava I could find, which is um, very stretchy and very breathable. Make sure you get balaclavas that are breathable. There's some that aren't very breathable. This is incredibly breathable. I have three of these. I only have one of these because I was testing it out, but um, I'm going to get another one. And um, then I have, a, I have shirts and stuff, but that's for another video. You guys are probably wondering what this is. Well, this is the only thing on my Deathcore of Krieg that is um, a little bit modified by yours truly, but bought. Um, this helmet I bought from Etsy. It is, um, it used to be this color. It used to be completely, it used to be plain black. It used to be plain black. But what I did was I painted it. There's a... There's a bunch of pictures on my uh, cosplay page of me painting this. This took over an hour to paint because everything you see here, the silver at the beginning is stippled bit by bit, tiny, tiny bits at a time. Not loads all over, just tiny bits at a time. Did the whole helmet, took an hour. Um, this helmet then was uh, sprayed with a, a really light mist of brown, a uh, really light mist of copper and really light mist of like a brass color. I want a brass color. When I say really light, I'm talking this was a good half a meter away and I was just spraying and like spraying up in the air letting it wash down over it and and, and the, the effect you get is incredible. Now on the front here, I love talking about this, on the front here is my very worn out and damaged Aquila. It's worn out and damaged on purpose. Um, the wonderful Warp Raven cosplay, Kim Warp Raven cosplay, she made me this and it's made of, it's cast from rubber. So it's rubber and it's super lightweight. And uh, I just sanded away uh, with a little bit of sandpaper, uh, the plastic, the paint where I'd done it, and then I super glued on, it's super glued on. The helmet is very, very flexible because it's uh, vacuum formed plastic. And then inside came with the, the helmet, these faux leather like buckles, um, but the buckle itself was just this piece of leather and this buckle, so it couldn't actually do anything. There was no actual holes or anything done. What I decided to do was I have pop riveted on some Velcro and it's super, super easy. I just put this through and I just 
push together and there you go so that's how uh, that's and that goes under my chin then people don't really see this much they, you see it on the side of my death call you don't really see it so much under my chin because the gas mask and the hose and everything takes a lot of that up but that is um these are all little metal studs as well that i i cut them off on the inside and then sanded them and glued them a bit extra because they were really hurting my head um i have quite a large head um so you know but this fits me very very nicely it fits me really really nicely I, I do really like this helmet um there you go if you just go to etsy and type in death core of krieg helmet it should come up um let me just get my beard out from underneath the, the strap and then do the strap back up there you go so you can see it fits quite nicely here um, but when the Creed gas mask is on, the lenses sit a little bit high in here, which is what you want. Technically, you'd want the you want almost half and half of the lenses. But the way this works, the way it's put together, you you see a lot of my lenses, and the helmet sometimes goes back a little bit. So I I do keep an eye on that. The Creed is still very new to me. So the Death Core is is something that I haven't done a lot of. I I did it at MCM properly for the first time. Um, I've got a few more events I'm going to take him to. Uh, he's going to be showing his face around. Well, showing his gas mask around a lot of events soon, which I'm really, really excited about. So anyway, that uh, is basically the, 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 the gist and the majority of my, my Death Core of Krieg uh, setup in terms of the gas mask, uh, what I wear under uh, the gas mask and everything, and then the helmet itself. Now, um, if there are any more questions about the Death Core of Krieg gas mask, please, please put them in the comments below. Message me on my cosplay page. I'm more than happy to answer them. The uh, the hose I got for the Death Corps, brand new. It's just a brand new hose that just connects into the same fitting. Um, I do need to weather it a bit. It's too clean. It's just perfect black. I need to weather it up a bit and get some get some like uh, bits and bobs put on, like a bit of brown paint and stuff like that. Make it look like it's been through dirt and mud and stuff, same as my gas mask and such. But um, if you guys have any more questions about the Death Corps of Creek gas mask or anything like that, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, to answer them. But uh, from myself and my wonderful Death Core of Creed gas mask, bye for now.